Okay, so a lot of people want to change out their tubs and install a walk-in shower. Many reasons for that. Maybe you have elderly parents that have trouble getting over the tub. I want to show you a simplified way of installing a shower with tile that isn't too overwhelming and won't take you too much time. So the first concept I want to show you is to do a shower base. This is a very slim shower base. It's only about three inches off the floor. But if you do a acrylic base like this, it's going to save you a lot of time and actually money at the end as well because not having to do this all tile will save labor and save money on the actual tile. Second thing is just keep it simple. If you do 12 by 24 inch tiles like this and you don't get into too much fancy tile work, you can actually do this very quickly and it's going to be really easy to clean. So if you have clients or you know you're, you want to be cognitive of how much effort it is to clean different grout lines, just keep it simple and uh, it'll be really easy to install. Okay, so we're gonna be doing this very simply. We're just doing some 12 by 24 inch tiles. One of my favorite thin sets for my go-to's just because it has a really long pot life is Ardex X5. And I always just get the white because it'll make sure that I can do whatever type of mosaic or whatever type of tile anybody buys. Um, but I really highly recommend this if you're a beginner because the, long, the length of time that it can sit in the bucket is a little over three hours. So it gives you plenty of time to be able to make all your cuts and be able to do this. So always make sure you want, uh, measure all your water. Uh, basically on this particular mix for this whole bag, we're gonna be doing six and a half quarts right in between the ratio. They have six to seven quarts. I go like to go right in the middle, six and a half. Okay, so we're gonna really keep this simple. Um, really, we were on a budget on this bathroom, so we're just doing a very simple tile layout. Actually, haven't done one like this in a long time. Literally, all that's going to be are these 12 by 24s. No borders, no niches, no shelves, just this. So it'll be basically like a solid surface wall, and then they're gonna have one of these different types of shelving units that are outside of the shower to house all their things. So. We're going to be sticking with the uh, one-third pattern as we did on the floor. But one thing you always want to pay attention to is the curvature of your tile. If this is bowed considerably, then you want to stay on that third pattern. Um, but if it is fairly flat, then go in half pattern, like a standard brick pattern, makes a lot of sense. But in this particular situation, the customer wanted a random pattern so that we're going to be doing those third patterns. So the first thing you want to do is... You know, pay attention to their features. There really isn't too much that can be concerned about because it's literally just going to be the tile and where everything meets up with the shower head or the valve is fine. The only thing I want to do is be able to go around my shower base. So make sure that my tile goes around it and comes outside of the shower about two inches. We're basically going to be matching this outside wall for our reference of our width. So you want to make sure that when you're cutting this, you're able to have that notch come down to the floor. And other than that, that's really about it. Making sure that we don't have a sliver at the ceiling is really the only thing I'm concerned about. So the first thing you want to do is just evaluate what the center is. So we got 58. That's 29 inches on the center. Pretty simple. Okay, so then when we do the third pattern, just evaluating that, we would basically have, if we put our grout joint right on that center, we would end up with a five and a quarter inch piece. And then when we go to, let me just make a mark here at 29. So then when we stagger this, the third pattern going over like seven and three quarter, you would end up with a, a 21 inch piece and a 13 inch piece, which works out great. And then just to extend this down further down to the 16, it's just gonna be the opposite on the other side. So 13, and 21 inches. So our smallest piece is gonna be five inches in the, in the corner, which works out great. I would say anything less than four inches on a wider tile like this is what's gonna make it kind of look a little um, forced, I guess you could say. So you can always offset your pattern a little bit more, but going center with the 12 by 24s is gonna work out great. Now let's just evaluate, you know, just to make sure that our floor is level too. 
So let's just measure down. I got nine inches, about eight and three quarter. So we're about a quarter inch difference on either side. Not a big deal. Um, but let's just, so if that's going to be the low side, let's go ahead and just make this the 12 inches, you know, or the basically the, the full tile here. So let's just mark right to the top of our full tile and then bring our laser up to that. Okay, so that gives us our full tile. And then basically we're gonna be cutting these down to about a nine and a quarter inches. So just let's evaluate from one side of the pan. Not that it matters, because we're gonna be able to scribe cut that now that we have bigger tiles. So nine and a quarter. Yeah, same thing, so about nine inches. So it's a quarter inch difference out of level from one side to the other, not a big deal. The only thing I wanna also wanna reference is my ceiling. So you can obviously measure this or just set the, the tile on here and make some little indication marks on the wall to give you an idea of what it's going to be at the ceiling. I'm more of a visual person, so I kind of like just marking up the wall to evaluate this. Now you're obviously going to have some 16th inch grout joints here that will extend it. So yeah, it looks like we're going to have an like 11 inch piece at the top. So pretty good. I mean, 11 inches gives us an inch room to cut um, to have that adjustment. Most likely it's going to grow a little bit because of the spacers. So, you know, we might end up with like 10 and three quarter, 10 and a half at the ceiling, but that's going to look pretty uniform. So if you keep it simple, you can do this in a day, get grouting, move on with your, your project. It's once you get into that intricate towel work, putting recessed niches in, even glass shelving will take you a little bit additional time. Um, but really what ends up taking a lot of time is getting into these more complicated patterns. Um, you know, that really at the end of the day looks beautiful. I get it. But uh, if you're trying to just do this on a budget and be quick with it, sticking with just 12 by 24s works pretty well. Okay, so we're going to be using one of my favorite trowels, the Euro trowel. So this is kind of like a quarter by half inch trowel, three eighths by half inch trowel. But you see how the ridge is on it. it. Kind of makes it nice. It's great for a large format tile like this. Kind of gives you the minimum amount of thin set and give you a great amount of coverage on your tile. But really, when it comes down to the tile, it's a matter of um, evaluating what kind of coverage you're getting. So we are we made sure that our wall was nice and flat. That's going to make this much, much easier. So first you want to just, like any type of tile installation, is just use the backside of the trowel and then work it into the substrate and then create your uh, directional troweling. Back butter tile. And it's not a bad idea just on your first tile. Pull it off, just make sure you are getting good coverage. So as long as everything's suctioning off of there, it should be in good shape. Okay, so then you wanna make sure you have a spacer between your shower base. So I just always like to use a 16th inch gap. And then we're just gonna measure our center that was 29 inches. Just take the time on your first row. It'll make everything a lot easier. We're gonna be using our T-lock clips as well.
So yeah, this was definitely one of the easiest showers I've done in a while. It was kind of nice not having all the different features to go around. Uh, but you'll see the pattern kind of just repeating itself over and over again. Just making sure that you use directional troweling with your thin set, back butter the tiles, set them in place. Uh, use those leveling clips. Those are really helpful on these bigger tiles. Make sure that you don't have lippage in between the tiles. And really the back wall was done first primarily so that the side walls cover the grout joint. So the back wall is kind of nice to start out with because you really don't have to be too accurate in the corners. And you really should have about an eighth inch space between the walls uh, for expansion contraction. So each uh, adjacent wall is considered a movement joint. So Try to keep a little bit of space uh, on your tile between that and the actual wall. So, but yeah, it's just a matter of trying to stay clean and put these things together. Um, this will kind of get you used to uh, tiling so that when you do the tile wall, the side walls, you can be a little bit more accurate uh, with doing your finish cuts. And then same thing for your ceilings, just make sure that you provide a little bit of a gap at that top of that ceiling. And that's really, really helpful because when we use the siliconized acrylic caulk that we'll be using to basically caulk that entire top joint, uh, if it has a little bit of a groove for it to go into, it'll be a much stronger joint and last a lot longer. Otherwise, if you have tiled straight up to the ceiling, you're kind of caulking and smearing between the two surfaces and it's kind of hard to keep a good uh, caulking joint. So always leave a space, 16th, 8th inch, something like that usually works pretty well. Okay, so you're pretty much a pro at this point, or you at least know the methods and the order of operation. And that is basically making sure that you get directional troweling, back buttering your tiles, using those leveling clips. And again, uh, I it, you can really make this pattern the way you want it to. I just feel like making the, the corner beds in the corner, making it look like one piece of tile is the best way to go. And as you can see, the pattern works out pretty well on a random pattern when you basically have a 32 inch uh, wide wall. So very simple, straightforward, and you're a pro now, so you'll be able to get this wall up done fairly quickly. So right here, you can see I need to add some more thin set so you can see how I can see that. So when you see that, just add a little bit more on that side. So
So one little detail here on the Ron deck against the, the wall. Uh, sometimes you have to use a horseshoe shim to shim that out to make sure that you cover the edge of your tile. That's really important and don't worry about that space. You'll be able to caulk that edge and paint that surface pretty easily. Uh, but you do definitely want to have that Ron deck even up with the edge of your tile. Okay, so plumbing wall, essentially the same thing. Let's get our raw deck up here first. No, I did run out of my Ord X5, X5 so I'm using some Mape thin set here. All I have is gray in the trailer, so you'll notice, I don't know if you'll notice on camera, but it is definitely a little bit more loose. It doesn't have as much of that non-sag quality to it. Not a real big deal with these bigger tile, but you know, it's definitely nicer having the Ardex X5 because of the non-sag quality of it. And it's just easier to work with, honestly. Okay, so when you put this Ron deck on, I would recommend letting it go a little bit proud of the corner and you, so that you can basically fill in the gap that'll be between the tile. You know, because a lot of times when you put the tile up, you're going to have to space this out a little bit. So let this go proud of the corner so then you can basically use it as the corner bead of the wall uh, the next day. This will make it so that you don't have any grout on the edge of this and it will be like a nice seamless corner. But yeah, just make this proud of the wall so that when you mud this you know you're going to be basically using this as the corner bead Okay, so the plumbing wall, more of the same. You're definitely a pro at this point. Uh, just be sure when you are buying Rondeck and you're selecting your metal edging to get the same size as your tile. That usually always works well for me. So if you have 3 8 inch thick tile, get the 3 8 inch Rondeck metal trim so that that evens up nicely. And then when you're installing it, especially even on this outside corner, uh, make sure you shim that Rondeck out to, meet, to cover the edge of your tile. Uh, as I was stating, you're overhanging the outside wall with the Rondex, so you're going to be able to fill any gap that you have there. As far as the valve trim, that's really just pretty much using a good grinder blade and making sure you cut as close around that uh, little uh, Schluter valve cover as possible. But be sure that you check your own shower valve trim. Make sure that you're covering those cuts. There's nothing worse than having an open cut there because then you have to kind of basically pull all that tile out and redo it but it's better to know beforehand rather than once you get into the grouting stage and then as far as the shower head uh, in this instance it was pretty easy I was able to just notch out a little square but you might want to get a one inch tile bit as well to be able to, if you're in the middle of the tile but other than that we'll be able to finish this up and you'll get on to the grouting the next day And hey, if you plan on doing your own bathroom remodel, definitely check out my course. I've put together a curriculum that goes step by step through the entire process of the bathroom remodel. It'll definitely keep you organized and prepared so you can efficiently get that bathroom remodel done.